five years since we brought home our very first cow. We got her off of Craigslist and she was supposed to be bred and ready to give us milk in just a few months time. And as and farming lessons go, she was certainly not bred. Um, and despite our best efforts, we were not able to get her bred. So it was just a few months later that we brought in our second cow. And it was with this cow that I developed my very first close bovine relationship, a relationship that is unmatched in the animal world. And if you've ever had a dairy cow, you know what I'm talking about. But when you are nestled up into their flank every morning, whether it's cold or hot, whether you want to be there or not, it's an incredibly intimate and wonderful relationship. We are now on our third cow and her name is Cecilia. And every morning Stu and I wander out to the barn together he takes the left teats, I take the right teats, and we milk her together. We've gotten much better at it over the years. I can remember many bruised wrists and cut fingers and wasted gallons of milk from both of us as we learned how to sort of enter into this relationship and how to become skilled, not only in the actual physical part of milking, but also in the emotional attachment that you make with your cow and how they also become attached to you. For example, if I try to milk the left teats where Stuart normally milks, Cece will let me know that that is simply not the way that we do this. <laughs> She's quite particular, as most cows are. But we are on our third milking now with Cece, and we seem to have found a very good groove. So she has a little calf with her, Lucy. And Lucy gets to be on her right now 24-7, but in the morning, just for a few minutes, we take her into the stanchion and we get our two gallons of milk for the day, and then she goes back out with Lucy in the pasture for the rest of the time. So when we first started, we got a cow that didn't have a calf. It was really baptism by fire because we had to be out there every morning, every night at the exact same time, no breaks. But having the calf on her means that we are allowed to skip a morning if we want to, or not do a night milking if we want to. It gives us a lot more freedom, which is really good for our schedule here. That's how it makes having a dairy animal pleasurable and possible. We often get asked if it's worth the effort, if being tied down to the farm with a dairy animal is worth it. And absolutely to us, yes, it is worth it. Raw milk is legal in Washington and we're able to buy it, but it's really hard to find a dairy, especially one close by us where we can buy it. And with this raw milk, we're able to make cheese and butter and just enjoy it for drinking. So though it's a bit of effort, maybe a little bit more so than other farm projects and it keeps us a little bit closer to home than sometimes we would like, the effort is certainly worth it. And our livestock guardian dog, of course, he gets his morning milk, so he would argue for that as well. <laughs> Because Stu and I milk together, it usually only takes us about 15 minutes from start to finish to walk back to the house with that full bucket of milk. So input to output, it's an extraordinarily giving system that we've set up with Cecilia. She provides us with so much. The chickens get the whey and buttermilk that's left over from our other endeavors. The dog gets a little bit each morning. The cat gets a little bit each morning. The children, of course, get as much raw milk as they can possibly drink and we get to enjoy the cheese and the butter and the milk fresh every day.
love that Milky gets me out of the door in the morning before the children get up usually, although they often sneak out to come milking with us. But this time of year where we are, it's bright and the sun's already up and it gives you a new different take on the world. You get to see the gardens in a different light and you get to kind of enjoy the stillness of the day before people are stopping by and traffic's going by on the nearby road. At this time of day, it's just you and your coffee and your milk bucket. It's very enjoyable. So after milking straight into the bucket, we strain our milk through a fine mesh strainer into gallon-sized jugs, and these are immediately put into the walk-in cooler where they will stay good for many days. After sitting for just a bit, the milk will separate into cream and milk, which is exactly what we want. It was due in part to the amount of milk that we were getting from our dairy cow that we decided to build our walk-in cooler in our root cellar underneath the kitchen. So we take it downstairs every morning, put it into the big walk-in, and that enables us to have a lot on store for cheese making and butter making. And after it sits, we're able to take the cream off the top into the KitchenAid mixer and make what I would argue is the most wonderful ingredient in all of the culinary world. Wouldn't you say? Stu's laughing. Butter making doesn't require so much skill as it requires a lot of patience. And when you think that back in the day this used to be done by hands, well then you become that much more appreciative of your KitchenAid mixer that makes this task much easier. Trust me, I have done this by hand. It is horse-staking and you work off more calories than you put in with the butter. So I'm very thankful to have this machine and the amount of work that it does in whipping all this butter. So after the butter is whipped and it's separated from the buttermilk, it's rinsed in ice cold water to rinse out the remaining buttermilk, which will spoil the butter if left in there. So the buttermilk is strained off, given to the chickens or used in smoothies or to soak biscuits. Waste not, want not. And then the butter is finally rinsed, squished around with some salt to help preserve it even further and bundled up for the freezer and fridge. Butter is something that can be easily bought from a store. We've kind of likened it down to this cheap ingredient that we just throw in our shopping cart every time we go to the market. But the reality is, in nature, it is the cream of the crop. It is a small portion of what you get from your dairy cow. It is a gift to be treasured. It's something that we value very highly here on the farm. When you've gone to the work of raising the animal, 
and milking the milk out by hand and letting it separate and whipping the cream. And you appreciate it for the amount of effort that goes into it and what it symbolizes from the dairy cow. It is a gift.